Hold on to your mug. We're in for a wild night. Greeting, traveler. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Born to be Wild, a wild exclusive Hearthstone podcast where we have fun hanging out with friends, talking about the wild format of Hearthstone and spotlighting members of the wild community. I'm your host, as always, Nate Wolf. It's good to be back on another Friday night here. Of course, joined by two of my favorite people. Michael, welcome back. How are you tonight? I played seven games today. I'm literally undefeated. Feeling fantastic. How you doing? <laughs> As it should be. That's great. Uh, and Hydralisk, welcome back to the show. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm doing really good. Uh, we have a special guest we're about to talk to here in a minute and a deck that I've yet to ever actually play. So, uh, yeah, so I'm really, really excited. And I do have all the cards, so that's sweet. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked and ready to go for the show, guys rock and roll and yeah like you were saying uh we've got a really special guest with us tonight uh so i'd like to welcome aboard legendary hearthstone player and streamer welcome to the show hazer how are you thank you i'm doing well i'm very excited to be here you know um i'm really excited to show uh showcase this deck it's very confusing but i'm hoping that you know we can get some good discussion about it and hopefully le learn a couple things so nice. rank one rank one legend leaderboard hazer <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, rank one right now in NA. So, hey, what up, man? Nice. Well, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. I like that. That's super cool. Yeah, I'm glad you're on the show. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you guys. Nate and I have been trying to set this up for over a year, I think. Oh my goodness, <laughs> man! I think we've been talking for such a long time. I think even yeah. way back, way back in the day when we were doing Into the Wild, and I, it's just been sometimes it's difficult to coordinate stuff. So I'm really excited to have you on. Yeah, it's it's been a long time coming, so I'm yeah, excited. absolutely. Hey, so for those people who are watching or listening who aren't familiar with you, can you give us just a, a brief introduction? Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, as much or as little as you want to share. Uh, but like, how'd you get started playing Hearthstone? Um, why do you prefer Wild, like the Wild format, that type of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So um, I started playing Hearthstone in August of 2014. So I've been around for like seven years. Um, and really, I first found Hearthstone just browsing the App Store. It was like nobody ever told me about it or anything. I was literally just scrolling through uh, the App Store. And I was like, huh, this game looks interesting. And I think it was like one of the uh, editor's choice or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I downloaded it. And then I kind of just fell in love with it and started playing. And then um, when there was the kind of wild standard split thing, um, I you know just tried wild and i really enjoyed it i liked the crazy things you could do with it and uh, i caught the bug and never really went back standard just seemed so boring after playing wild <laughs> so <laughs> so true <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and then i guess a little personally i'm a college student i just finished my first semester and going back in a couple of weeks so I've just kind of been focusing back on streaming and Hearthstone again more recently. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been great. Nice. What are you studying? Uh, I'm studying nursing. Okay. Oh, that's nice. super cool. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So I've always been really uh, inspired by the medical field and just kind of how the body works. I really love science and, you know, it's just always been intriguing. That's cool to hear. I didn't take it to the level you're at, but um, kind of a few levels below. I worked at as an LNA uh, locally. Uh, mm -hmm. Some places in the country will call it a, a CNA, but um, basically a nurse assistant. Um, yeah. Worked in you know some some home care and uh, some facilities as well. Never in a hospital though. Mm -hmm. um, I, I heard that's where the big money is at in the hospitals. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to end up with my uh, nursing degree, but. You know, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just enjoying it. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely enjoy, it, man. That, that's cool. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Good, good field to be in. Don't, yeah, don't definitely. do uh, food. Everybody listening, don't do food industry. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> no I, I, I feel you there. <clears throat> yeah, there's always a anyway. too. Always high demand. Oh, I Especially bet. Especially now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, for sure. 
So. Mm-hmm. I saw, coincidentally, I saw the uh, emails going out that like the vaccines are starting to become available, at least round one shots. And so that's real interesting. I wonder how long it'll take to roll things out. It's been uh, an interesting couple of weeks, to say the least. So, yes. hey, so do you play any other games or just Hearthstone? Um, yeah, so I have tried other card games like Gwen or Legends of Runeterra. And never really got into them as much as Hearthstone. It, it, they always just seem to fall short in some way, whether it's like the graphics or the gameplay. I just didn't enjoy them as much. Um, and then I also play Rocket League, which is very different from Hearthstone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a, definitely a good change of pace. Um, and then I've also recently got into Spellbreak, which has been a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's pretty new. It's uh, I don't know what that is. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You just said Spellbreak? Yep. <laughs> oh my god. All right, we, we, we could talk more about this. No, yes. we really should. I've not uh, I have not played it. <laughs> Good. Um yeah, it's a battle royale and there, it's like it's like Fortnite except there's no building and it's all spells. Oh, and, I mm-hmm. did see that. It's mm-hmm. really fun. I highly recommend it. So I'm so glad somebody credible came on the show and said that because I made a show <laughs> in Discord. <laughs> I'm going like to lose me. Hey, anybody play this game? No one said nothing ever. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> That's where I heard it from was you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no this game's awesome like mm-hmm. it, it's it's like a oh it's just so cool like all the spells and different elements you can play it's like avatar inside a fortnite build with no building yeah. it's, it's cool yeah so i've really been enjoying that too these uh past couple weeks so <laughs> mike and i are gonna have to play now <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> You no, found your person, uh, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <Right. laughs> no, it's kind of fun that we found, like, we've got a, a pretty big Discord channel going, and we have found um, a bunch of friends who also play, you know, similar games that we do. Some people, um, a lot of people have been playing Hades. Excuse me. A lot of people play, um, like, Clash Royale or some other games. And so it's kind of fun to see, you know, who plays what and get friends on other games as well. Yeah. So. I also play a little Clash of Clans if you want to count that, but... <laughs> nice nice hey so we we always ask everybody when they come on the show how did you come up with your username oh uh, yeah <laughs> there's usually a funny story uh, um i don't know if my story is necessarily like funny i don't know so basically um you know when i was when i started playing hearthstone and i was asked to make a username i was like what 10, 11 at the time, maybe 12. Um, and, you know, I was super fascinated with computers, just like, especially the accessories, like, you know, the headsets, the keyboards, the, the mice. So um, I was obsessed with Razer, except I couldn't afford anything <laughs> Razer product because I was so young and I didn't, I didn't even have like a, like a PC. I just had an old MacBook at the time. Um, so I wanted something that rhymed with razor and make myself feel special in that way. <laughs> so I made myself Hazer. Oh my God. That's so great. <laughs> yeah. so, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's not that exciting, like that. but it's just, I don't know. No, I like that story. No, but it's original. <laughs> that's so. funny though. That's great. Um, mm-hmm. that's good, man. So and I thought it sounded good too. So, <laughs> No, oh, that's, uh, that's good. Like Hydra said, that's original. Just like his name, because I, when I heard that story, I was like, that's pretty cool. I didn't know nothing about StarCraft whatsoever, except for that one time I played, I think, for a card back or something. I don't know. Right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. B- b- before Hydra Lisk, it was actually, it's a similar story to, to Hazer. My name before I had the Hydra Lisk one was, it was so dumb. It was called Generator X. <laughs> and that legitimately was the name of a demo disc that came with my Sega Dreamcast. It said <laughs> Generator X on it. It was a, just all these demos for my Sega Dreamcast, and that's what it was called. And I'm trying to come up with it, and it was in StarCraft. I'm like, what am I going to be called? Sure, Generator X. <laughs> like, it's the dumbest name ever. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Man. I'm gonna start introducing that you like- that, as that on the show each week. <laughs> Generator, Generator X plays on all these servers every month. Generator X, <laughs> energy. Oh my god, that's great. Hey, so I got a question for you, uh, in particular about so you're rank one legend right now on NA, which is incredible, by the way. But uh, so I assume you've got the eleven stars, yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> How so? This is no. This is interesting, right? So I, I I've been trying to like. I, typically, I'll hit legend, and then I just kind of meme out and and not do anything. And I'm curious if you've got rec any recommendations about actually climbing in legend. Like it has been uh, a, a not very fun experience for me. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so are you asking, like, is it is the 11 star bonus worth it? If you well, put that much time yeah, I mean, I'm curious about your opinion. Number one, is it worth it? And, and if it is, like, what do you recommend to, to like, climb? Like, it's, I mean, I, I fully understand the grind to get to Legend, right. and I've been doing that for a long time, no no issues. But, mm -hmm. um, like, once you're there, like, God, dude, it's, it's uh, like the opposite of fun so i've been playing ghost of shushima all week <laughs> <laughs> yeah so personally like for um because my mmr is so high now i usually enter in at top five legend and that's Holy like a crap. privilege yeah that's a privilege that i've just like built over these last couple of months I, my super high finishes um mm -hmm. But let me tell you, I'm cl I was just recently starting to climb on my Asia and Europe accounts, mm -hmm. and I'm like kind of struggling to find that motivation to keep pushing through um, Legend, but or like yeah, keep climbing in Legend. Um, so if you don't have, and also like this is also important that you know the eleven star bonus puts you in a new bracket of players, right? Right, 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 and, yeah. And mm -hmm. that bracket is a lot smaller, so your queue times are going to be longer, okay? And then those players are all pretty competitive, right, if they're getting 11 stars. So you're going to be facing meta decks every single game almost. I mean, you're going to be facing, you know, your Dark Glares, your Seeker Mage every game. Um, so, so at some points, like, I wish that I had 10-star bonus, which is <laughs> super horrible of me to say because I'm so privileged, but... <laughs> you heard it here first, people. <laughs> that's, that's just my experience that's what it's been though i i mean it's been do you want to play dark lair or do you want to play against secret mage or do you want to play against reno priest or every once in a while like a big priest you know but like just over and over and over and uh yeah i, I mean i imagine things will shift once they there's some new cards out or maybe things shake up a little bit but mm-hmm Memnarch says, imagine not playing the meta breaker Galakron War here. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when you saw, back to when you saw seeing um, the the client inside uh, the store when you got Hearthstone and you saw it and you clicked on it, did you know Blizzard at all? Or... So no, no. So okay. I, I don't even think I realized that Blizzard, because you know I didn't look at like the publisher or anything, and I didn't have like the Battle.net client too. So I didn't even realize that Blizzard was a thing until like probably a year after I was playing. Ah, um, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, and I haven't really played any Blizzard games besides Hearthstone. I mean, I played a little bit of Heroes of the Storm to get a card back, um, and then yeah. that's about it. So. Gotcha. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. The, like for me, the whole reason I picked up Hearthstone in general was like Blizzard as a card game. Mm -hmm. I'm checking that out. Yeah, no, that's funny. It's kind of how it was for me because I kind of grew up on Warcraft and Diablo. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm a little young, like for, you know, to be grown up with that. You know what I mean? So I never really had that. Yeah, um, yeah. Like that hype of like, oh, World of Warcraft is out. Like, let's let's grind. Like, that was never really it for me. No, you're hanging out with your internet dads today. I think we're probably. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's pull ages. What are we talking here? Uh, I'm 19. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Well, not dads. More like older older brothers, uncle. Bro, I'm 20 <laughs> years older than you. <laughs> oh wait. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm 15 years older than him. Nate's got 20? Yeah, okay. All right, you're right. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, so very different times. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. I will say this game has really uh, united a lot of people, which has been a lot of fun. 
Chad is yeah. going crazy. We're the cool uncles, yeah. And Wildcard has shirts older than you, which is kind of gross. Lisa saw his underwear. I hope they're. <laughs> oh man! I hope they're band shirts. <laughs> now you got to you got to rotate underwear. Oh yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh god as my dad would say wear them yeah yeah wear them for a couple of days and then flip them and wear them inside out for a couple more days and you're good to go nah, <laughs> no. Mm. Uh, yeah. no, i don't think so <laughs> i think my dad told me that once too though so <laughs> some things never change oh, that's good to know <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's funny all right, you guys. Uh, hey, before we go any further, I do want to take a real quick break to say thank you to the patrons of our show, uh, in particular, um, our executive producer, Shokunins. Thank you so much uh, for supporting the show. And a very special thank you and shout out to all of our patrons. So Adam W., Claudette G., Daniel B., and Justin M., thank you guys so much for the support. If anybody out there is watching or listening is interested in supporting the show financially, you can visit our website at borntobewildhs.com. If you click on the Find Us page, there's a link to our Patreon. Uh, every little bit helps, even if it's a dollar a month. Uh, alternatively, you can support the show by purchasing any Born to be Wild merch. Uh, if you go to our website, there's a merch page. We've got all different sizes, colors, shapes of shirts, hoodies, hats, you name it. Speaking of, Hydralisk, you're not wearing your, your beanie tonight. Oh, oh. oh, there you go. Your hair is long, dude. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Wow. Can you put it in a ponytail yet? <laughs> Probably Not good. <laughs> wow, that's much longer than my hair. I wasn't expecting that. Mine's just yeah. I know it's kind of just. I said it was a mop. I'm impressed, you guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, when uh, I kid wear level, I do have the Born to Be Wild hat. That on. is a nice hat. Uh, if anybody's it's interested in supporting the show in a non-monetary way, there's a few very simple but effective things you can do. Uh, if you go to our YouTube, like and subscribe to our videos on YouTube or leave us a review on iTunes, that type of thing goes a long way. So anyways, uh, nice hat. I like the merch. Um, and uh, moving right along, I do uh, typically... Excuse me. Also, one of the things that we like to do is give a shout out to first time wild legend players. Um, I didn't think that we were going to have any. And then last minute we got one. So I'm really excited. Uh, one of our friends have been playing Hearthstone since beta um, Kemmel first time legend four hours ago. Finally made myself find the time and push from D4 to legend this afternoon uh, in wild with discard warlock. And uh, super cool nice. so it always it always feels cool I, man. I, I love it especially when you've been playing for a long time like it's such a major achievement uh-huh. so we love to see that um yeah so shout out to kennel yeah awesome congrats, first dude. time legend that's cool hey uh i just want to put something nate said real quick definitely uh definitely check out that youtube hit subscribe because uh we're getting pretty close to 1k did you guys see we're 47 away oh we're super close oh, nice oh. I've been in a little bit of a slump the past couple weeks too, and I feel like I'm ready to kind of rock and roll again, putting more content up there. Um, yeah, you know, holiday season, you know, you do got to take some time off to recharge, and it's all good. It happens. We're human. We're not robots. <laughs> massive, uh, like massive holiday hangover. I will say, um, we. You mean Max, Mike? Max. <laughs> oh, you got me. <laughs> there you go. Um, yes. So b- very soon we'll be back to doing deck spotlights, uh, weekly videos with wildcard, um, some other stuff. So, and then actually, uh, since I'm here, we may as well talk about it, working on some stuff for the podcast in general. Um, mm-hmm. so hopefully soon right now we stream from OBS. So we'll be switching to Streamlabs. Um, uh, we got some pretty cool, uh, like st- stinger transition so when we go between scenes working on some um some transitions there and some uh audio clips nice. uh working on some intro outro getting a custom um animated background made and uh some e- emotes custom emotes made we've got two slots now so that's super cool so all this stuff is like in the works um mm-hmm. behind the scenes and i can't wait to uh you know, share it all with everybody. It's just I'm work, waiting on, on artists and stuff at this point, but it's really exciting and should be should be a blast. Um, I'm excited for the future. Uh, yeah, you man. know, been on the show for six months, so uh, the next six months will be even bigger and better. 
it should be a good year. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be it'll be fun. Awesome. Me too. Uh, yeah. To hit back on that Wild Legend thing real quick, if anybody out there watching or listening hits Wild Legend for the first time, please reach out to us on Discord or Twitter or email or whatever, uh, just so that we can give you a shout out on the show. Um, should be super cool. We 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 enjoy doing that. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. Uh, at this part of the show, we'd like to check in with everybody, see how everybody's doing, what you've been up to in the game of Hearthstone. So, uh, how about you, Hazer? What what have you been doing this week? Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about how I'm rank one on A, but this week has kind of been a little bit of a battle for that. I've been going back and forth with a give me kill to, uh, you know, kind of fight for rank one. Um, but, and then, you know, I've been streaming every day. I've also been uh, working on my EU and Asia, you know, climbs. As I said earlier, um, in for Asia right now, I'm playing Kingsbane Rogue mm-hmm. and Europe Dark Glare. So, you know, I kind of just threw those decks together, free to play, and hoping for the best. Um, which I've able to get Legend in both, but you know, struggling to crack like top 25, which was my goal. So we'll see. You know, keep you updated on that. Um, and then. I've also actually been playing a little bit of Arena, which has definitely <laughs> been a really nice uh, kind of change of pace from regular Wild Ladder. Uh, I actually got my first 12 win Arena in probably over a year. Nice. Oh, wow. Right on. Yeah, so that was uh, really exciting. And then that's about it for me. I um, had a pretty chill week here. Uh, before the show, we were talking about how you know I have a couple more chill weeks and then I go back to college. So, you know, another semester in the works. So then I'm done with Hearthstone for a while. But, you know, it's been a, it's been a good run these, this uh, month or so. so. Oh, that'll be good. It's nice to have a, a, a good break there and be able to relax. and Yeah. Let's get your mind off school for a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, how about you, Mike? What, do you, what have you been doing in this world of Hearthstone? So, uh... Admittedly, I haven't been playing Hearthstone that much since the last show, since Keith was here. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's not because he completely obliterated my feelings and everyone else's feelings <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the trash submissions. <laughs> you know, um, wastefully take you know taking his time away. Um, no, I just I got to the point that you know Hazer kind of said it earlier without me leading him to say it. Because he plays obviously way, way, way much more than me at a higher level. Um, I just got to my to the point of like burnout. Didn't mm. feel like queuing into uh, glare or priest, big priest, Reno priest, or a secret mage, or what was Reno Jackson playing when I queued into him? This random druid deck that does like jade stuff, but it's like Highlander. But it's really weird. So shout out to Reno Jackson for me even remember that. It's like <laughs> prepare for the big three and then a queue into queue into him mm-hmm. at like rank two hundred or one hundred fifty or whatever. And I'm just like, all right, I lost that match, but whatever. <laughs> so, um, I rarely get into this tilt mode because I started the same month Hazer did, like seven years ago. Yeah. So there there would be times, of course, like you'll you'll get burnt out. But uh, this just it it happens to me this time around. So I just kind of took a step back, started playing more uh, Nintendo Switch, more Spell Break, more um, Hyrule Warriors. That game's pretty awesome. Been the playing game that game. Cool. With the, been playing with Megan. Playing a uh, two player. It's pretty sick. How does that work? To does like one person control where all the mobs are going, and then you got to kill them all? Something like that. So. Um, each each person will take control of one of the warriors, so you can be Link, you can be um, is it Impa? Her name is. You can be um, uh, there's another one. There's there's a bunch of characters. Um, when you say the mob, are you talking about like the enemies themselves? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, um, I don't th- I don't think you can dictate where they go. Okay. I must be confused. I remember when it first came out for the Wii U, I thought that's how the multiplayer worked That on the Wii U. I was reading a blog. They said that uh, this version of Hyrule, 
um, was much more updated and advanced oh, okay. than the first one. So maybe some things changed. I didn't yeah, play the yeah. first one, so I'm not sure, but I'll take your word for it. Cool. But um, yeah, to finish up the Hearthstone week, I played some games. Uh, I think I played like I'm checking my my stat tracker. <laughs> I played like 14 games in the past week, but I only lost <laughs> one. <laughs> hey, that's a good record, though. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seven of the games today, I built like a Highlander dragon warrior, but I I skillfully built in. All right, it's not skillfully. It's like five or six cards. I put in the ETC combo just in case people act stupid and I need to beat them real quick. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I won seven games and it was all secret mages. And I don't have chief chief inspector. I don't have secret eater or eater eater secrets. Nothing. But um, I I, I beat them. I went seven and zero. I went straight to Discord. I went to Twitter. I closed my computer and I sat back. And this this is all in the week. And I was just like, I took a week off. I went seven and zero today. I was like, nothing changes, dude. I'm going back to my Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I for that, man. If you're not having fun, though, like, hey, do do, you know, do what makes you happy. And... Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, I'm not. See, like, there's some people out there who will trash the game. You guys can check my Twitter. I didn't trash it. I didn't say nothing. I just fell back and just did other stuff because that's mm-hmm. what you should do. <laughs> like, yeah. there's the options out here. But I'm not gonna. I was, that's a whole other topic. Let, let me stop myself. Uh, who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Nate, 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 Nate. Nate. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's been, your week? It, it's been a pretty uneventful week. Um, just kind of the daily grind with with life. But the uh, kind of interesting things that I did over the week. Uh, again, I'm kind of going back and forth between Hearthstone and playing a lot of um, Ghost of Tsushima on PS4. It's really, it's just really fun. The story's really good. The gameplay's really good. It's like watching artwork. It's just, it's gorgeous. And so that's been a lot of fun. Uh, but in the Hearthstone world, I got some coaching from Mentalistic. Uh, and that's been a blast, actually. He's a great coach. Um, mm. I paid for five hours. We've done two so far. And it was great. I mean, had a really, playing mainly Odd Paladin, really, really good win rate, actually, playing with him. And then I went kind of went and did it on my own and didn't do quite as well. Um, <laughs> I will say climbing the legend ranks is is a, definitely a grind, um yeah it's i i don't want to say mm. it's like fully unenjoyable but it's definitely different than um you know i don't know is it worth chasing that 11 stars i keep asking myself i'm like uh, i don't know i don't know probably not for me but I, in, in this meta probably not <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't mean to not not to sound like I, I'm, I'm not trying to sound like that but it just <laughs> happened it's secret mage it was just secret mage like <laughs> i like what you say go back to 10 stars play fun decks Right. Uh, I will say the other thing that that um, so the, I I do recommend that we still have some time left and so we'll do some more. Um, and but if anyone's looking for coaching, um, Mentalistic was great. He's fantastic. Mm-hmm. We've had him on the show before, and uh, I I really enjoyed that. And so I'll probably do some more this weekend. Uh, the other thing that I watched last weekend was super fun. Um. Smudge normally plays on EU, and she finally made an NA account. Oh, did yes. a bunch yeah. of co-op with Goku, and climbed with with like awesome. a zero star bonus or whatever. I think what does it give you? Default six star bonus or something like that? No, it's like two. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, no. Two. So she had like no star bonus, right? Played on NA, got Legend over the weekend with it was like a ninety. I don't know. 95 percent win rate or some absurd amount like when i tuned in <laughs> when i tuned in it was like it, it, she, she was like 60 and three or something absurd like that i, I mean it was oh just it was incredible and so <laughs> I, f- I feel sorry for everybody she versed on on two stars and she she crafted like full king's bane rogue and just slaughtered everybody on her way to the top <laughs> <laughs> it it, yeah, it was awesome. Oh, okay. So she, uh, Schmoopy Daddy's in chat. He says she cleaned up at like 116 to 14 or something like that, which is just That's incredible. Awesome. Like, it's just absolutely incredible. And so, my goodness, I know that she posted the two lists. So when she hit D5, like, and she typically will play two lists one with the cannons and one without, which is similar to what we talked about when she was on our show. Uh, and I think that she started seeing the real meta decks at D five, which is not surprising. And, yep. uh, but it's just incredible. 
and uh, watching the co-op stream kind of all weekend long was really fun. And so, yeah, that's about it for me. Um, anyways, yeah, yeah. Oh, she, her real Kingsbane is so cool. So I don't know if you guys know, she oh, made yeah. a she made a a real Kingsbane like on a three D printer. I think it was in four different pieces, and she assembled it and then she painted it. It's so cool. It's like probably wow. about yay big. I don't know about the size of your your arm or something. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, awesome. yeah, relatively uneventful week for me, but it's just been kind of a slog. I I work in government, and so watching all the crazy stuff that's happening in the government, and I'm at the local level, like the city level, but watching everything at the federal level, like oh boy, like uh, hey, what's going to happen next week when um, you know, not to get too political, but when it's inauguration time, like everybody's that I work with, everybody's a little bit nervous, like oh boy, uh. Are we going to have to close down? Are we going to, like, what's going to happen? And so um, it'll be an interesting week. It, it's kind of wearing mentally, um, but, you yeah. know, it's all good. Uh, Hydra, what have you been up to? Well, this week, after last week's show on Saturday, I decided to go, you know, play on NA and EU and clear. I did a dumb thing. I kept re-rolling my weeklies because I didn't like them. <laughs> and so on Saturday, I had all these weeklies, which is technically like Sunday in EU and um, Asia. And so I had all these weeklies that I needed to clear, like play the corrupt cards and win this many like BGs and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, no, what am I going to do? So I spent the day Saturday like I don't have decks on those accounts that ha that run any like corrupted cards. Right, so I basically I picked priest. I had to do this on both of those two servers. I had to I, I just typed in corrupt and I threw every single corrupt card I had in and just kept queuing until I played enough corrupt. Like you need to play like fifty corrupt cards or whatever it is. I can't remember. And um, yeah, I was just playing like these horrible decks, absolutely horrible decks. <laughs> to try to complete them and then yeah i did some that's another thing too for duels if you want duels wins it's actually not that bad you can take like a recommended deck for say demon hunter and say you're missing a couple of the cards just substitute whatever the heck you have and as soon as they give you like they give you a bucket to pick whatever cards they'll just end up offering you the ones you needed in the first place anyways so I found that that wasn't too bad. But I spent a large portion of Saturday clearing off those weeklies because they were going, like, I had a deadline, right? Because there you were going to get the new weeklies coming in soon for, for the next one. So I did that, and then I also decided, so on Sunday, I'm like, I'm not going to let this happen next week. So I cleared all my weeklies on Sunday for, which is, tick, like, their Monday. So I just spent all Saturday and all Sunday just doing weeklies on EU and Asia, just because I didn't want to have to deal with that the next week. Just get rid of them. So, yeah. Lots of doing that. And then uh, Ladder, uh, I've just been sort of equally playing on all three. I think I'm I'm in Diamond on NA and EU and almost Diamond on Asia. So, like Plat 2 or something like that. So, I've just sort of been playing them evenly. And nothing really special. I've been jamming Mentalistics, Odd Paladin, like you've been playing, Nate. Playing that one on, yeah. on Asia. It's it's a lot of fun. I like it. I was uh, pretty lucky to open Lithraxian. Is that what he's called? The 5-5? Five five? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough to open that card, so I didn't have to craft it. And I already had a basic Odd Pally anyway, so I think I also opened Oh My Yog as well, so that worked out. Sweet. And so, yeah, that's... That's basically been my week. Not a whole lot of major grinding, just equally playing and trying to... I want to make sure I get level 50 so I can, like, on all three, so I can get the cool new skin on all three picks. So I'm almost there. Uh, like, I got it on NA. I'm almost there on EU. Asia might be a little harder. I think I'm level 39 on Asia, so... Oh, God, you... <laughs> Do you want to tell people you were telling me last night? I, I so last night we jumped on just super quick to do a mic check because I, I set up the new microphone. I want to make sure it was working. And, uh, oh god, yeah. Okay, so I was a little 
So what happened was... It's <laughs> a, this is a good story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on, on EU and Asia, I don't spend any money. Th those are complete free-to-play. I've dumped all my money into NA. Those accounts, I don't pay for anything. On EU, I bought the... Um, what's the starter pack you get? You get like 10 packs in a legendary or something like that. That's for like six bucks or something, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I, I did that originally yeah. like three years ago, but so I was getting a little paranoid. I wasn't going to get there. I wasn't going to get to level 50 and I was like, screw it. I want the XP bonus. So on EU, I got the stupid battle pass thing that gives you the xp bonus and, uh, and so i'm sitting at level 38 at the at the time and i'm like okay so i get to get this thing and like i know for the first 10 levels after that you get like a 10 percent, and then after level 20 or 25 or something like that you're gonna get the 20 percent. so i'm like man i'm gonna get a whole bunch of xp now it's just gonna boost me like i'm really really stoked so i buy the stupid thing it's 20 bucks and I don't it, like it didn't ding like as soon as I got like I didn't ding up another level I'm like there's got to be something wrong so I like exit the client open it back up again I'm like no no like it, it still didn't ding like what's going on so I look at my XP bar I, when I bought the battle pass or whatever you call it the track rewards pass I was at the bottom of 38 so like level 38 and 100 XP or whatever I had now earned about say 4500 extra xp which brought me just to the top of level 38 that's all it did oh yeah i didn't even gain a single level i gained just over 4000 xp for the, with the bonus and that's all it did not even a level 20 bucks and i didn't even go up a whole level yeah, so not count the prior xp <laughs> like it 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 did so it, it gives you the <laughs> the the bonus on the prior XP, but if you think about it, the first like couple levels you only need like two hundred XP or three hundred XP or something, yeah, so you get the bonus on that, right? Mm -hmm. So, and even all the way up through twenty, it's still they're small, like twelve hundred XP, something like fifteen hundred XP. So just I got a bonus on all that, and in total, it only came to just over four thousand experience oh for the guys. extra. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. I'm so stupid. <laughs> so the, maybe uh, realize maybe it's not even really worth it to buy the thing unless you like the, the skins. Yeah. Because at that point, now I only need eleven more levels to get to fifty, right? So I was just under level thirty-nine, like just barely. So only eleven more levels. So maybe by the end, since all these levels are five thousand XP, by the end maybe. With the bonus, you skip a few levels, like total. Like I only basically am skipping one, but at that, that point, but maybe by the end, with all the XP on five thousand, like the bonus on five thousand, it's better in that that those like last ten levels. But it felt real bad. Like I, I for some yeah. reason, I had in my head the second that I got that that I was just gonna jump, right. and it and it didn't happen. Well. And, and when yeah. I was kind of tilted, I tried to play Hearthstone after that, <laughs> and then like lost two, or three games in a row. I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm, rough, I'm turning man. This off right now. I yeah, yikes! <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. Oh well. oh well, it's fine. At least I get all the cool skins. Hey, so there's that. sorry to put you on the spot, but it was a fun story. <laughs> and we, we get an opportunity to Damn. laugh at your misfortune. I'm sorry. When I did it, when I did it, uh, when they gave us all the boost, uh, I gained three levels, and it was I went from I don't I don't remember it it was or maybe it was two, a little over two. It wasn't a lot, but it was I went from like. 37 to the top of 39 or something like that at the time yeah when they changed the reward track right when they yeah. when they changed all the end yeah if you were in like high 30s or 40s at that point you would see a boost but if you were anywhere like 30 or below you weren't gonna get anything something like that yo that's i feel bad man i'm sorry about that that's all good <laughs> it, like yeah, it really set me off that evening i'm like oh. <laughs> but I, I i was trying to think of it this way I've really spent twenty dollars in worse ways in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's not that bad. 
<laughs> it just felt pretty bad. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, so we had a little bit of news this week, and actually, uh, Mike on the spot over there just uh, sent me heads up on some uh, breaking news, but let's cover what we have first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know if anybody here had this happen, but there was a post on Reddit that went up. And there was a picture. Somebody had posted that they had this interesting uh, picture on their client, thinking maybe it was the Anduin Book of Heroes. It was a little confusing. I personally didn't see it myself. I've seen it on the post. But it's a picture of Anduin, and he seems to be dressed up what looks like in rogue attire, like holding some daggers, and he's even got like a like a bandana over his mouth. And did like we got the picture here? If you guys are watching live, is any of you did you guys have this or have any speculation uh, like on what's going on here? Is this part of his book of heroes or what do you guys think's up with this? Um, I thought it was like an ugly Valera. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's hilarious. That's I, funny. I I think rogue skins are a meme at this point. I just I just think that they're not going to do them. That's <laughs> that's hilarious. No, <laughs> this is just pushing it farther. The troll, you know. <laughs> yeah. Based solely on the picture, I would say, and the bad haircut, it's got to be Anduin. Um, <laughs> But but they also have the uh, the card pack right here, and it's got the priest um, hero power on the pack, and so mm -hmm. it's in my mind it's got to be priest book of heroes, right? And then yeah. we had asked um, Goliath in in Discord, hey, does uh you know wh what is this? Is there lore behind this? And he looked it up real quick, and I've I I looked it up on a couple of other sites, and it looks like um he it. Th there's not a whole lot of lore to back it up, but essentially before he became a priest, he was trying to, I guess, be, you know, consider being a warrior or something. I don't know. I, it, it was, there's not a lot of lore there, but, um, I, I guess there's some a little bit of backstory in him experimenting with, uh, other things before becoming a, a priest main. So yeah, I got a, a lot of things. A lot of things you said is very like uh, <laughs> like a ga gasoline, you know, um, experimenting. And before he was this, and uh, <laughs> I see sweat you are in chai, and I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's a little, some, some, a little, some spicy comments going on in chat. I don't really want to say out loud here. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, that that happened. More news on that soon. Uh, the other thing was Ixar did a big um, Q and A on Twitter, which I thought was interesting. So he uh, he posted the other night. He was, "Hey, for the next hour, you guys ask a bunch of questions, and I'll answer them." Um, so there cool. was there was a bunch of stuff, uh, and he. It, it's always interesting to get um, developer insights. The funny thing was, and I say funny when I when I say funny, I mean sad. Anybody who asked a question about Wild, he just didn't answer it. <laughs> like, oh. like he didn't like answer negatively. He just like straight up didn't answer it, and so that was a little sad for me. Uh, we've got links here if anybody wants to read the like the takeaways. We had uh, both out of cards and Hearthstone top decks did like roundups of all, of all the answers, which were interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Did you guys see any any key like takeaways or highlights? Uh, the only thing that I thought was kind of neat is uh, he addressed Shadow Priest and said that he really liked the idea of Shadow Priest and it's basically something that we may be seeing coming back in the future as part of the Priest class. Um, and it, sa it says it's being explored again right now, like in development, they're exploring it. So I mean, it's interesting because when they talk about class identity there's a couple classes that always get I, I mean they're very confused with uh, druid you know used to be all about ramp but then they've nerfed the ramp um and uh, i think they've always struggled with rogue a little bit um shaman has gotten nerfed so many times that uh <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and then they experiment with things like freeze shaman, right? Murabi and all that. And it's like, uh, what are you guys, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Um, and so, you know, it's interesting. I, in looking at the, uh, highlights here, I'm just going to go through it real quick. Um, I really like the, um, the kind of full recap that out of cards did and we'll we'll put a link in the show notes and i'll put it in chat too if anyone wants to look at it but but basically um out of cards did a uh recap by section so classic set rework uh he said it's complicated and will be answered soonish it's a good change game modes team five wants to see more modes like battlegrounds where players can jump into a game immediately um Battlegrounds still growing. Duels will receive an update soon. Du- duels will continue to be a limited number of sets with rotating sets. Honestly, I played uh, a lot the first two weeks and I haven't really touched it since. But Battlegrounds is actually really fun. Um, I with yeah. duels for some reason like I I don't ever Yo. feel compelled just to click that button. But whenever I have a quest that involves me doing duels, I always have a blast. Oh, I Every always time. re-roll it. <laughs> Yo, bro. Oh, well, I I've been playing. I like I play it when I have to, and I have fun every single time that I do it. So cool. as long as I get a good class, yo, obviously. <laughs> I think I I think I seen the light. Um, because I stopped playing duels. I have like six thousand gold, and I actually I played battlegrounds, and I didn't hate it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! We've got Mike. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, I remember we like with this show, like we we're like this is no battlegrounds podcast. We ain't talking about battlegrounds. <laughs> and then yeah. suddenly, like Nate and I played with some listeners, and we're like, this is this is pretty fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, and, then, and, and now I'm like, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not very good at it, but it's fun, and I like the idea that I can play something and not really worry about tanking my MMR. Uh, or losing ranks or whatever, um, and you get XP while you're playing it, right? Like in, you know, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Duel Duel seems kind of dead to me already, which is yeah. kind of scary considering they just released it. Yeah. yeah. I think they'll have to spice it up a bit. I know there's new hero powers coming out and stuff, so yeah. maybe that'll help. Yeah, I also think the way that they released it. I think uh, Zeddy was talking about how like they only, you know, th- they released like two treasures, but there's like six that are on the screen or something. It, it, like it just feels like you're so limited still, even within the realm of duels. Mm-hmm. That like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It just it just seems pretty bland. I yeah. feel like once if if we all have access to six hero powers, then and there's different treasures at, at that point. If if there's multiple different paths you can go down instead of this deck is the best just build that exactly. one right if there's all these different options and there's more than one build for hunter it's not just death rattle hunter or whatever then you know at, at that point or smack him in the face demon hunter every single time because yeah. that works really well <laughs> it does yeah. work surprisingly well yeah Hey, there are a couple more notes here. I just want to, I'm just going to read them real quick just so that we've got them on here. So if people don't want to read the article, they don't have to. Uh, just talking about a couple of cards and mechanics. He said Maligos was on the list to Hall of Fame two or three times, but uh, always slipped out, I guess, last minute. Uh, Gadgetan Auctioneer dodge nerfs for a couple of years. The Warlock Hero Power Life Tap, they discussed early on to change it completely, but they couldn't find a good idea for replacement. Um,. He was, they were very happy. He was very happy with how Mysterious Challenger turned out, initially not believing how powerful it would be. He said they also whiffed on Spirit Claws, the power level. Um, so they had asked him, hey, what cards do you think were way better than you thought or you didn't see coming? Um, and so that those, those were kind of the answers. Mysterious Challenger was way better than we thought it would be. And we liked it. And also we, Spirit Claws was too powerful. Uh, one of his favorite cards is Void Ripper. I love Void Ripper. Oh, yeah. That's a fun card. It is it is it is good. Um and it, it is really not played very much. Uh but it, it really it makes good against spreading plague. <laughs> yeah, it really is actually. I used to play it in combo priest. Yeah. Uh I did too actually. Ooh. It's mm-hmm. yeah, I know you can flip things and it's kind of an alternate win con if you don't get your um 
uh, I don't know if it's inner fire or the other one, but, um, yeah, inner fire. to, to flip it. Yeah. They're talking about, uh, nerfing the potentially nerfing animated broomstick, but it, uh, they like it right now. <laughs> it, it, it quote unquote makes the game different. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> different, different. I'm not muted. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, for mechanics, he said that inspire as a mechanic was weak on purpose. Um, they weren't sold on the gameplay, but they had no time to redesign it completely. Well, okay. Um, they said that hand uh, that hand buff in Mean Streets of Gadgetan could have been stronger. That they didn't get the power level right. Um, there they are exploring Shadow Priest again. Uh, in sort of a different direction for Priest. Uh, the thing that I th- really thought was interesting was that he said that they will most likely use dual class cards again. That, mm-hmm. And then he said, frankly, we think Hearthstone would be more fun if dual class was always a thing. Um, mm. as, as somebody who has played other TCGs, um, Magic or Pokemon mm-hmm. or, or any of those, where you can do dual class type stuff all the time, uh it makes the game really interesting. I mean, you can definitely break the game, but it makes things like your, uh, just the, the variety level of decks would, would increase like by a ton. So we'll see. I wouldn't oh, yeah. be surprised if that's part of all these new game modes they're talking about. Yeah, maybe. I don't One know. of them is dual class game mode. <laughs> yeah. Here's a, here's a real kicker. What about if that priest portrait is a dual class portrait. <laughs> okay. so oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Wow. Priest rogue dual class portrait. Yeah. Priest mm-hmm. rogue. Wow. <laughs> Yo, priest isn't supposed to go face to. That goes in line with your meme because you were like, like they're never gonna make rogue skins. So like, rogue got another skin, but it's also for priest. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. It, it, it works with the theory. So. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, quick quick question. Hazer, what did you pick for your level 50 skin? Oh, I, I had to pick Rogue. I felt yeah. so desperate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm looking at Captain Valera and I'm like, mm. Mm. you know, th- mm. although 500 win Valera is one of my favorite portraits. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I really like the Night Slayer one too. So I decided to go there. I haven't had any regrets. That's so. good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, I, a lot of people picked, it's really pretty, pretty funny. A lot of people picked rogue just because there's no other, um, portraits for rogue aside from the Maev one. It was kind of funny cause yep. it didn't, I don't think it slipped into the notes here, but somebody had asked, Hey, can you, um, make that one available again? Cause I missed it. And he's like, uh, no, <laughs> it was oh, just kind of funny. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> which which goes right there right there with your meme right like <laughs> oh my gosh yeah like, no. essentially what he said was hey we've been putting old stuff in the store like card backs and stuff but we don't have any plans for that one and i was like uh okay. they wouldn't even sell it that Dang. was a quest rogue special that one <laughs> mm. uh hey Dang. you guys we got breaking news um while we we're on the show this Yo. always seems to happen on friday night and and big ups to mike yeah. Mike, Mike, uh, sent this, sent, sent this over. So I'm just gonna, I don't have it pre-prepared, so I'm just gonna, um, add a little, just share my screen here. Um, I, I, I want to thank Blizzard cause I said this before jokingly, but it's happened time and time again. Uh, thank you for dropping the news, you know, after you know, once you start the show, cause it's, it's perfect time with our new segment. So I love it. Thank you, Blizzard. I know they are watching, right? Yeah. So check this out. Um, Hearthstone releasing Dark Moon Races mini set January twenty one. So wow. here's what six, the article six says. Days. That's apparently. Wow. Ooh. I mean, this is That's breaking. Some big breaking news. Yeah. Uh, here's what you need to know. Hearthstone releasing mini set of thirty five cards on January twenty first. The cards can be found in Madness at the Dark Moon Fair packs. A new solo experience focused on Prince Anduin will release on February second. So there you go. Oh. Uh, so that's our that's our Anduin uh, thing here. Let's see here. Uh, Dark Moon Races will... I'm just going to read the article. Dark Moon Races will mark the return of mechanics first introduced in Ashes of Outland and Scalamence Academy, such as dual class cards and spell burst, which triggers powerful effect next time players cast a card. Uh, players who want to get all of them can pick up a bundle through... 
May 11. That can't be right. Uh, May, April, maybe. I don't know. Uh, it says through May 11 for $15 or 2,000 gold, which includes one of uh, one of each of the set's four legendaries and two of all the other cards. Huh. Hold on. Okay, okay, let me read this uh -huh. again. Wait. Players who want to get all of them can pick up a bundle through May 11 for $15 or 2,000 gold which includes one of each of the set's four legendaries and two of all the other cards. Uh, it also says January 21 will also bring updates to the battleground system, including two new heroes and minions. Dark moon races will be added to duels games the same day and players will have access to a new hero power and three new treasures. Uh, it also says on February 2nd, Hearthstone will launch a new single player expansion or campaign uh, focused on Prince Anduin of Stormwind, the fifth chapter in the game's Book of Heroes series is free to play and will show how Anduin learned to wield both holy magic and a sword as he traveled throughout Azeroth. Players who complete the campaign will receive a pack of cards for the priest class. That's it. Hmm. That's crazy. And this is from, it's not even from Blizzard themselves releasing this. this uh, announcement, which no, is this is from windowscentral.com. But, but... But uh, I Googled it, and there's a, a couple other places reporting the same thing. So, hey, I hope that we could, um, you know, break this news here. Well, I, I guess it's kind of cool uh, that it's going to be in the store through May 11th. That's going to be good for people that, like, come into the game in that time period, right? Like, new players aren't going to feel like they missed out on something. Yeah. Because it's going to be in the store for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. You think this is real? Or you think this is fake? I mean, it it I, could be fake. Like it's not from Blizzard. I don't see it on Out of Cards or Hearthpone yet. It seems a little too good to be true. I don't know though. It, mm. We we haven't heard anything about this mini set. I feel so. I wouldn't be surprised if they just dropped it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, this whole year they've been kind of like they wait until the last minute to share the news. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it's real. That being said, like over the past year, I think just about all of the leaks that we saw turned out to be real. So I don't yeah, know. I, I, just, I, don't I, know. So, I just want to say the last leak we saw, um, I think there was like a day or a day and a half, maybe two days before the information came out. And like, obviously their Twitter is going to be silent, but everyone in the community, there was like split where some people were like really upset like how dare you leak this and the other half was like me just living her life like waiting for it to come out and then it came out and it matched up with the leak so if this isn't from them um i'll lean towards this is real until it's not real i'm, I'm, I'm cool with it let's do it right i mean yeah i i think you know the way i look at this podcast is almost like a like a like we're like a news organization right uh, yeah. or like we're reporters. And so when I see something like this, I feel obligated to mm -hmm. share it, whether it's real or not. Uh, it's yeah. certainly interesting if nothing else. And I think we've all been so hungry for a change in the meta and for new cards that the mm. idea of, Hey, this is coming out next week. Heck yeah. Uh, that's great. I want new stuff next week. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I hope it is, um, you know, it's a little weird seeing an article like that without, um, you know, there was no pictures, there was no logo, there was no nothing. But that being said, uh, it, similar things have happened um, between this this little screenshot of the priest thing that was on Reddit and the article. I wouldn't be surprised if we got an official announcement, you know, over the next couple of days. I don't know. It's also on MSN.com. Also, uh, Trump had a card. And then he kind of spoiled it, or no? Was it duels itself? I think he uh, he had uh, like screenshotted. Oh yeah, yeah. He called it. <laughs> it was his YouTube. Uh, then, yeah. yeah, it was his YouTube um, thumbnail, mm -hmm. and it said Wizard Duels. Yeah, yeah. And he it released was. it. He released mm -hmm. it early, and I think it was like a oops. Um, yeah. So we'll yeah, see. so it's it's too easy to lean negative, like oh, it's fake, it's fake, because like people slip up, and we're all human. So I think this is a leak, and I'm ready. Let's do it. I think so too. Well, and typically what, what we've seen over the past year is that 
uh, this happened. I swear, this happens all the time. We're mid show on Friday night, and something, and we get, and there's news like happens mm-hmm. live. It, it's happened so many times that I sort of expect it at this point. Uh, it's been pretty funny that, or they announce uh, nerfs or something like while we're doing the show. So we'll see. And and if nothing else, like I hope, like Armorn is saying in the chat, I hope the date is right at least. Seriously, mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be nice. It, it's a win-win for me. Like, let's get this. Uh, either these cards come out the twenty-first, and we're playing new cards, or I'm playing Spellbreak with Hazer. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, if the announcement isn't true, we know stuff is coming anyways. So no matter yeah. what, stuff's coming. Regardless of this is real or, or not, it's it's still coming. Yeah. So I guess we'll just wait and see. If it's a leak, I bet Blizzard will comment it on it in the next 24 hours or something like that. Probably. I I mean, I think a lot of them, they're still working from home because of the COVID stuff. I think one of the other things that Dean said Mm -hmm. in the Q&A, which I fully uh, agree with, was a lot of times people will make comments like, oh, can't you just push that through or can you rush that out or can you, um, you know, make that announcement or whatever it was like, can you push this thing through quickly? And he's like, well, it's a pretty large team that takes a lot of different people. And so it's not like we press one button and it's go like it has to touch 10 different hands before it goes out. And it takes, you know, something that you think would take five minutes takes two weeks. And so I see that at work all the time. Um, Very seldom are things as easy as, uh, you know, pressing a button and this thing is now live. Like there's a lot of um, kind of hoops to jump through. And so I wouldn't be too surprised because last time someone had asked him about, um, I think it was, I would think it was something on Reddit asked him about information for the mini set. He basically said it's still happening and we're not ready to talk about it yet. And that was a week mm-hmm. or two ago. So, I, I mean, we all knew it was coming and they hadn't had announced it for about halfway through this set and we're right about there. So the timing lines up really close. So whatever, we'll see. Uh, so we finally get our the next rogue skin, except it's for priest. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> uh, I, I I'd laugh if the um, like we've been complaining forever, but I'd laugh if the next rewards track that we get is just littered with rogue skins. Like you know how we have all the mage skins, we're just flooded with them now. I don't know, I think man. Really- I I think I'd love that. I think it's going to be Paladin because that's that's got to be like the second one up, right? We've got lots of Paladin skins at this point. Um, we'll see, or maybe we'll see. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, they've got to pick two, right? Which is interesting. So they, they could be like, "You guys wanted rogue skins. Here's rogue skins." <laughs> it's a, yeah. We were gonna do. We were yeah. We were gonna do. We were gonna do Druid and Paladin. We decided to just do double up on Rogue. So here's ten. <laughs> here's ten Rogue skins for you guys. I, I think that would catch them up, honestly. I, I think what that would put them at five. That's pretty equal with the other classes. <laughs> A mage. I have like three pages of mage skins at this point. Yeah, it's, it's like, seriously. It's, it's, I want. <laughs> I want a Murloc dressed up as a rogue. Can you guys imagine if this is like a physical card game and all the extra mage skins you can carry with you? Like, in your mind, like, oh, like, 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 come on, bro. Like, they ready? You guys know that one rogue player? He has like two <laughs> two skins in his binder. <laughs> yeah, dude, we should get a Finja skin. Someone was saying a, a Murloc rogue skin. Yeah. Just give me yeah, Finja. I'll take Finja. Finja. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Finja skin for rogue. That one. Oh, my gosh. We. we you guys heard it here first. I used to Finjas. play. I used to play Water Rogue. Come on, that used to be a thing a long oh, time I ago. I love that deck, and I love how Water it came Rogue. so so like late in that meta. Someone's like, "What happens if we put Murlocs in here?" <laughs> <laughs> like new deck, end of expansion. Like that was really cool. Oh my god, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> that was when games lasted past turn five. <laughs> 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 Hey, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's enough speculation. I mean, I guess we'll see. We can talk about it more next week and see what actually happens. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed and and hope for the best. I kind of been hoarding packs 
um, and gold and hoping that this is going to land soon. It's always tempting to start opening stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm anxious. I had been guessing four legends um, in this new set because they said 35 cards. And the way I looked at it was like, that's very similar to um, any of your old uh adventures sets that came out mm -hmm. and so yeah. that's that's kind of my prediction but you guys i guess before we move on do you guys have any predictions on on any mechanics or how many legends or or anything that you want to any hot takes that you want to do and see if we're right next week um i think for me i mean i think the four legends make sense because you know that would also line up with the pricing too because the old expansions i think used to be like 15 dollars. is that right 15 to 20 um, something like that 15 to 20 yeah, yeah 20. so i think uh maybe I, I don't know see seeing a hearthstone mini set for 15 dollars is a little little sus but yeah, I, I, again, yeah we're hoping <laughs> right it feels very uh almost too good to be true yeah. they didn't say they're trying to make the game more accessible to new players they did say that They've been saying that a long time. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> very Seriously. true. But that was that was part of was that part of the new part of XR's announcement, or was that something else that they said recently that there's going to be a change that helps people get into the game easier? I don't know. They keep talking about reworking the classic set, and then they said something. They said something really interesting about the Hall of Fame that we had talked about a little bit last week, where something to the effect of we're not ready to talk about it yet we're i think they're doing away with the hall of fame we are going to like rework stuff um and we were kind of speculating hey maybe there's maybe they're just going to rotate the classic set i don't know it, it'll certainly be interesting um, well maybe they'll do like if they give us a new classic set and rotate the one they have maybe when they say trying to get new players into it easier maybe there'll be lots of quests or on the new rewards track a way to earn those new classic packs like mm -hmm. really quickly or something like every level you get a pack for the classic set or something yeah like maybe that. i wonder yeah. i've been hoarding classic packs i think I, I think i got the advice from blister guy it's like hey once you have everything there's no reason to open them um or even if you have most of the stuff that you want there's no reason to open the packs anymore and then like when they did the ple uh, the uh, priest rework you know you save the packs until they do that you open them up and you get the new cards right away without having to craft them mm -hmm. so i've sort of been right. doing the same thing i don't have a ton it's like i don't know 10 or 15 packs you know it's only one a week from the tavern brawl but still i think that um i don't want to have to craft a bunch of stuff but it, it, they yeah. made it sound like edwin was going to get rotated as opposed to hall of famed yes and so like how you know you got to read into that a little bit um it makes know. it sound like there's going to be more than just him rotating if there's a rotation right i don't know all right. it means to me is that you don't get a dust refund which kind of sucks but <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah but i don't know i guess we'll see we'll see i we could speculate all day i'm curious what is actually going to happen but I don't know. And to be fair, they have done a lot for new players recently. Like even just with the one deck, if mm -hmm. you haven't played in three plus months, like that was a huge, that was a huge deal in my opinion. And it actually like, you know, kind of um, motivated me to explore my Asia and European account too. So I, I think that they're definitely going in the right direction with that stuff. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I do. Hey, when is the yeah. rotation anyways? When does that happen? whenever the next expansion hits oh so like in april or whatever yeah Ooh, you're right it's it, it always it, it's so confusing for me right because we have okay there's the calendar year that starts in january and then i've got the fiscal year which starts in july and then we've got the hearthstone year that starts in april like enough enough uh no chinese new year <laughs> it's always <laughs> man i can't keep anything straight so i don't know <laughs> I, I mean it's confusing i think as a wild player right they say hey it's a uh, we're gonna rotate stuff I'm like oh that doesn't matter to me all that means is we get dust when you hall of fame stuff so mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of dust yeah, oh, usually. No. <laughs> I will say I I wailed out a little bit when they nerfed Edwin. I dusted 
my regular one and crafted it in gold and it was nice because it was essentially half the price i mean it still cost you 3200 but like i just got 1600 back so mm -hmm. that was cool not that we really play them in wild but no it, i've got gold and edwin too and i just i love it every once in a while i pop over to standard just for fun and make big ed ones i did that yesterday it was like <laughs> even though it was nerfed i still got a 14 14 like Jeez. very cool. early on it was pretty sweet nice. except yeah. uh, it got devolving missile <laughs> oh that hurts, that hurts. Oh, <laughs> yeah <dude. laughs> like so oh no i'm sad <laughs> Hey, for the golden craft segment, really quick, I crafted a uh, golden broomstick on purpose. I hey, there it. you go. Hadn't you? Nice. Didn't you say you made a uh, golden like a Reno mage a while back? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, I might have, I might have. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened? Boom! Secret mage blew the heck up everywhere, all over the place. It Hey, that stuff that stuff will still be good. It just you just keep it in your back pocket until you need it and then you can pull it out yeah. again. Yeah. Exactly. You're right. I'll wait till it's cool. I'll wait till it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be back. I qu I crafted Quest Mage on EU and then you know, Secret Mage became super big and nobody started no one was playing Quest Mage anymore. And so it just sits there. And it wasn't exactly cheap. But I'm sure it'll be back one day. Like Hopefully, anyway. Yeah. Spent a lot of, spent a, spent a lot of dust. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, 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 I feel you. I, I feel your pain. Like, you spent the dust. You're like, it'll be back. Ho hopefully, because I spent the dust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I Yeah, yeah. Uh, it will be. Hey, so let's talk about this deck of the week. So Hazer brought us an ETC Warrior <laughs> deck, and this looks kind of spicy, and so... I keep seeing this pop up, right? And I keep seeing people play it. And it's been intimidating for me, frankly, because it's not that easy to pull off. When you do, it's amazing. Um, and I've watched it. I've watched it happen a few times. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you do that? And I've been looking for an excuse to play this card. I think, Mike, you just, you just opened one, right? Uh, the ETC. Yeah, I actually opened it like uh, two weeks ago and or whatever it was a little while ago and i had no reason to play it and then i saw this list more and more and then one day hazer i didn't know he knew about me but he raided my stream and i was like oh snap so then started copying some lists he's been playing and i'm following his wave and yeah this this car is awesome there's definitely some shenanigans you can do with this uh so for the people who are listening to the audio version of this i'm gonna read i'm gonna read the the deck list real quick um, and then we'll post it in the show notes and on the website and all that stuff. So here's the okay. deck list. Two copies of Animated Broomstick, two copies of Eternium Rover, one Guardian Og Merchant, two Risky Skippers, two Shield Slams, two Town Criers, two Armor Smith, two Battle Rage, two Dirty Rat, ETC, God of Metal, two Acolyte of Pain, uh, Ankar, two Bloodsworn Mercenaries, Brand Bronzebeard, Lord Barov. Uh, one copy of Shield Block, Zilliax, Emperor Thorison, and two copies of Blood Boil Brute. So, tell us about this deck. <laughs> so, this is one of the decks that really kind of, you know, rekindled my love for Wild for a while there. Um, I saw, I don't remember, but some guy was, you know, getting pretty good win rates with etc warrior and i was like what's the what's etc warrior so i kind of looked into it i looked at his list i uh you know copied it i switched out some cards i made like four or five different versions um the really not like cool part about etc but like yeah basically there's like 26 core cards here wow. or like what are the other cards um hmm. So the flex cards would be like Zilliax, um, obviously, and then I would consider, you know, um, Dirty Rats, like flex cards, quote unquote, because you need either Dirty Rats or Cornered Sentry, unless it's just not going to work as well, and we'll get into that. Um, and then also I'd consider one Shield Slam a flex card, and then I'd consider Shield Block a flex card. And then every other card in the list, I think, is core. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I think that... But, you know, 
uh, I look at that and I, I'm really excited because I'm like, oh, sweet. Like, what are what are the best combinations of those four or five slots that we have? Um, and uh, if you disagree with me, if you think there are some other cards that could be considered, like, flex cards, like, I think Acolyte of Pain could maybe be thrown in that. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm... Or even Guardian Og Merchant. But, again, Guardian Og Merchant and Dirty Rat, you need a card that does a type of effect like that Bad right function well, yeah right so like in sp standard i know that they're they're running like pen flinger you know so th that would be uh another example of that so when i look at the deck list i see a draw engine right between mm -hmm. so town crier um uh, the uh acolyte of pain my battle rages uh my armor smith the Ankar, um and so you're cycling through your deck, right, in order to get the combo. And then last time, mm -hmm. I correct me if I'm wrong. I think what they had done, right, is you you drop etc. You damage it with your Og Merchant. You copy it with Bloodsworn Mercenary. Mm -hmm. They need to have stuff on the board, right, to to run your things into. So you can Dirty Rat if they don't have anything yeah. on the board. And mm -hmm. then you Broomstick. Um, and so you have to play both Bloodsworn Mercenaries, right? So do you need an Emperor Tick to play all this? Is that like what's yeah, the, what's so, the combo here? <laughs> that's the fun part about ETC. It's kind of like a build your own combo depending on the the, the board state, right? It reminds so, me of Exodia Mage a, a little bit in that it's it's almost like it's a solitaire style deck or a combo deck where you're you know you mm -hmm. you need your combo, but at the same time. Where where this is different, you know, Exodia Mage can kill your opponent no matter how much health they've got, as long as your APM is quick enough. Where this, like, there's some variance, you know, if their health is is low enough, you may not have to do the full combo, right? Exactly. I, I you know, it's pretty rare, honestly, that you pull off the full combo and you deal like, you know, the full 32 damage or whatever with this deck. Usually, um, you, you know, there's like. The part of the game where you survive and you draw a ton of cards, and then in the meantime, you have cards like your Blood Boil Brute that will stick around for a turn, and you know you can maybe hit them for five or ten with that, and then you know sometimes you get like an ETC and you just play like three one drops in a broom and you do like ten damage with that, you know, or you can just one Blood Sworn and um, then do four damage for each Rush Minion. So there's so many different combinations that you can do with this deck. And that's why I like really enjoy it so much. It's that you know every game is really different, and you have to uh, basically survive, and then figure out how you can win with the combo pieces you have left based on how you survived. So, <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, I guess if we're saying like the full combo you asked, so it would be yeah, etc, og merchant, and then usually a bran. Okay. And then you will blood sworn, and you would get two guys. So then on board you would have six, mm -hmm. I think, or six. Yep. And then you play um, your broom, right? Right. And you, you know, hopefully you will trade something in on the board. You trade, you know, your blood sworn off. You trade the og merchant off, and you trade the um, uh, the broom off too. Yep. And then you blood sworn again, and you can get all those you can get up to five etcs holy um, cow okay yeah so that that would be like the full combo but i don't think i've played many games with this deck and i have not gotten five etcs on the board you usually don't need it um it, it's just yeah <laughs> so. i mean i guess if you're playing against a an odd warrior or some kind of druid mm -hmm. um Solar Flare yeah. has made Druid crazy with the, uh, you know, going from no armor to 24 armor in one turn. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So usually in those, you know, you, you have to pull off more of a, of a fancy flashy combo. And, you know, another place where you run into problems there is that all of a sudden, they usually don't have that much on the board, right? These control decks, they usually play maybe one or two minions at a time. Um, and sometimes they're big, sometimes they're not. And, you know, that's where sometimes you have to, like, Hail Mary on a Dirty Rat and hope for a big enough taunt. Mm. And, you know, that's where you can start making the argument for a Cornered Sentry, too. Yeah. Um, 
Well, you're and, bummed, you right? Know, I mean, you need to run your stuff mm-hmm. into something, and if you dirty rat and it pulls a broomstick or something that's with super low health, like that doesn't help us very much. Exactly. So that's kind of a problem that you run into. However, you know, I I, I prefer dirty rat. Um, I've talked to Corbett about it a little bit, and he also prefers dirty rat. It just feels the cornered century just feels so weak for some reason. It only feels like. I, I've never pulled mm-hmm. off a combo because of Cornered Sentry. Yeah, it's one you know? of those. It's, it, it almost felt like a win more card. I guess I'd classify it as that. Like, I was going to win anyway, and now Cornered Sentry kind of just, mm, yeah. I don't know, got me maybe 10 overkill instead. So I really like the idea of, it's like, oh, you're not going to play a minion, hey? I'll make you play a minion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I'm doing this combo whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Agreed. I like that. So, how does this hold up against your our big three, like particularly Secret Mage and Dark Glare? Um, so I think that the Secret Mage matchups is one of the worst matchups for this deck, which is obviously very sad and why we're not seeing it much right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, however, like into Dark Glare, it feels pretty strong in my opinion. Um, usually, you're hard mulliganing for Barov. And again, it's it's like a survivability thing, and then maybe they're at ten health, and you kind of cheat an etc like half combo, fourth of a combo, and win the game, uh, like that. Yeah, well, and that's what tends to happen in my experience, at least with Dark Lair, is that they get themselves down to, you know, ten health or less, and so the exactly. combo, you know, you don't need the full combo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's why I think Dark Lair is a okay matchup for the most part unless they obviously do crazy dark glare things um <laughs> but with secret mage there's just too much disruption you know between counter spelling your battle rages or explosive ruining your risky skipper or even etc right so there there's there's a little too much excuse me there's a little too much disruption yeah uh mm-hmm. to really just um ma- make it a good matchup and uh, something to add on to that is that this deck doesn't have much like board clear, as you can see. Like obviously, it's got the risky skippers and whatever, but the risky skippers don't, you know, stack up too well against secret mage minions, right? So, you know, the um, the oculates, the four fours, the cabal crystal runners, the Kieran tor mage, the three health breakpoint is really bad for risky skippers because that means that the risky skippers are also dying. So, you know, you don't really get your battle rage off as clean, or it means that it's being, your game plan is being disrupted in some way. Um, So, those are a couple reasons why it's bad into Secret Mage. Uh, So, (laughs) yeah, that's uh, Hmm. that's it. All right, so the strategy (laughs) is pray pray for no Secret Mage. (laughs) I imagine uh, yeah, this I am... probably does pretty well into priest decks, though, right? I mean, who are typically a little bit slower. I mean, if you can outdraw them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the most part, it matches up really well into Reno Priest. I haven't had much trouble there, especially with uh, newer versions not running a Lucia. You know, that card's being cut a lot now, so you don't have to worry about that as much. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you didn't hear about that, Mike? A lot of people... I took, se- I, I took seven days off. What happened? <laughs> people, yeah, Lucy, people are uh, cutting it for secret hate, is what mm-hmm. I, in my experience, is where it's... Like, it's one of the couple cards that was sort of considered flex to add, a, like, an Eater of Secrets or any other secret hate. Uh, people are running... So people are pulling cards out of Reno Priest to add Chief Inspector and, and uh, Eater <laughs> of Secrets. What <laughs> is... Right. Well, that that tells you. I, I think, you know. I mean, even then, when okay. I when I hit legend, about a third was mage and a third was priest, and then the yeah. the rest of it was kind of a, you know. And then there was a pretty good chunk of warlock, and then the rest was like a mishmash of everything else. Uh, but secret mm-hmm. mage is definitely like on fire right now. Oh yeah. yeah, it's everywhere, and yeah, now secret hate is everywhere too. So I wonder if that's eventually gonna make people stop playing as much secret mage. I don't know. I don't know, but it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, it really I, is. I've had secret mage matchups though, where like they drop Reno Jackson, and cool, it buys them one turn, and then they're dead the next turn. Like, all right, yeah. So yeah. it. Right. 
the deck is just super refined at this point. I actually enjoy playing the mirror in Seeker Mage for some reason. I like trying to outsmart the other Seeker Mage. You must be a sadist. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of mirrors, what would the mirror be like with this deck? That's a really interesting question. That's um, a I, great question. So, if there, if I had an ETC warrior, I think what I would do is go for um, like gain a ton of armor. I think I would try to play super defensive in the mirror, and then maybe try to get like a brand rat to get their combo out or something. Mm -hmm. um, I think dirty rat is a really nice tool if a mirror would ever to come up. I've never had an ETC mirror, but you know, hypothetically, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then also, you know, if they're playing dirty rats, you could just not play anything, and it, it could just become a stalemate too. And I would just armor up pass, waiting for someone to do anything. Um, that could also happen. So it, there's it, also it you, can pretty, you can get some pretty good armor between um, armor smith and uh, risky skipper, Eternium rover, yes. acolyte of pain. Like mm -hmm. gain a bunch of armor, draw a bunch of cards, and then battle rage and draw a bunch of more cards. So I know run just card true heart. <laughs> just a card true heart. I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> I have a golden one. <laughs> oh man that's fun i hope you didn't craft it no i opened it okay <laughs> yeah yeah i know basically useless after odd warrior came out yeah um, just card true heart control warrior mirrors were very sad yeah it's just whoever got just a car first mm -hmm. oh back in the days of uh, vlps i love that guy yes oh my gosh Love yeah. the LPS. Cool dude. Uh, so what are you looking for in the mulligan here? Right. So the mulligan <laughs> is uh, very difficult. It depends on your class, what you're facing. So again, as I said earlier, you know, if we're playing against a warlock, it's most likely Dark Glare, right? We're going to pretty much hard mulligan for Barov. Um, other good cards pretty much always are like Ankar. Um, even Eternium Rover on one is pretty good. Um, however, I don't know if I would necessarily like keep or say to look for Eternium Rovers on one. Um, against more you know slower decks, maybe like a Reno Priest, I think uh, card draw is super important. So I would keep pretty much any type of card draw, whether it's Acolyte or Battle Rage or, again, Ankar. Um, so... Really, you're just looking to, uh, you know, take control of the board and have that skipper turn, right? Maybe get a Blood Boil Brute down, Battle Rage, refill your hand, and then from there, kind of just either uh, against aggress uh, aggressive decks, that is, right? And then right, controller right. decks, you're looking to just draw a lot, and then you're looking to get some sort of combo to kill them. Um, yeah, so Mulligans, Ankar, Barov, um Actually, you know, let me let me say something about Barov. I think that Barov is probably one of the like single strongest cards in this deck. So I might always keep Barov. <laughs> you know, yeah. like mm -hmm. I, I think he's mm -hmm. that good of a card. I don't think that you have many cards like him in the deck too. So he really has a, you know, he's gonna clear your board. He's gonna clear the board, and he's gonna let you kind of stall for a turn. Um, mm -hmm. So he's he's very important. Well, and I I've like Barov. I mean, it's great into Dark Lair. It's also can be really good into Secret Mage. And it was interesting. I mean, this was a couple weeks back. Like I, I hit Legend early, but um, I had faced a lot of Secret Mage players. I was playing Odd Paladin, where typically you're not very favored because Flak Mage will wipe your board so easy. And I just kept <laughs> winning. And my thought was that hey, there's so many people playing Secret Mage, and I don't know how to say this without being rude, but like. Mm -hmm. They were just, it's like, God, it's going to sound awful. Bad players playing a good deck. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. and so, um, yeah. but I think what you could do real easy is drop Barov onto a secret mage board. It gets blown up and then it clears their whole board and people won't play around it. So That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, Love that feeling. Yeah, it's, like, oh, it's great. <laughs> oh, oh, you try to stop me from doing what I want to do? Take this bear off. And oh, there goes your secret. 
see they're rubbing their hands and then the, oh wait oh it's a bear off oh crap <laughs> yeah <laughs> until yeah. it's potion of polymorph <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, people start that running some people start running some weird texts. I saw something over the last couple of days, and I don't remember if it was on Twitter or Discord, but someone was running potion of poly um, and eater of secrets. I think in their secret mage decks, and I was like, wow, mm -hmm. wow, okay, um, wow. I don't why? Know. Just I, why? Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. When we potion start, of poly, I guess maybe just. Just to be different, when it was start, so predictable what secret you're gonna play. Potion of like, Poly was oh. good when there was tons of, um, like when there when uh, Q Block was everywhere. Q Block, mm -hmm. Potion mm. of Poly is great, but Q Block is kind of dead, unfortunately. That's like my favorite deck, but uh, we don't need Poly right now, so yeah. yeah. Uh, everybody, one second, um, moment of silence for Nate. Welcome to the club. Uh, a blizzard destroying your favorite deck. Welcome. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know back. my my we'll gold back. my gold Q block deck is sitting right next to your gold Reno Mage. <laughs> so oh. we'll dust oh. it off. We'll dust it off when uh, the meta shifts. <laughs> dust it off. Don't dust it. No, heaven forbid. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> I see. no. Yeah, I haven't played a game of Q block in. God, I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. I will say it, that that I think Reno, Reno Lock, Reno Warlock is still pretty good, and mm -hmm. it plays very similar. So if you need, if you're jonesing for some cube lock, you play some Reno Lock. It's pretty similar. It's not the same, but it's not too far off. Yeah, yeah. Um, this deck into cube block is actually kind of bad sometimes because you can't really remove the Malganus very well like yeah. you got the shield slams but mm. you know some i i've come into some situations where Malganus is up and i'm just like damn it i can't kill it it's behind a void lord mm -hmm. and yep. you know it's just yeah it, you, you know how that story ends <laughs> so <laughs> bottom right yeah <laughs> hey so with the dirty rats uh is this a pretty good cue into a uh, mali druid so for Mally Druid, um, I think Dirty Rat definitely makes it a little easier. However, I think Mally Druid would still be pretty strong, mm -hmm. uh, just because, yeah. just because they, how do I put this? I don't know. It doesn't. Mally Druid's very, you know, it's a, it's another combo deck, right? Except mm -hmm. what Mally Druid does is, you know, very very different from what you're doing. They are ramping quickly so they're out ramping you and then they can do their combo just before you because of that and it's not like you're in a weird spot because you can't gain enough armor to like block their combo yeah but you also can't do enough damage quick enough to like kill them before they can do their combo so yeah. i yeah part of it is has got to be psych melon because it it tutors mm -hmm. their exact combo and then yes. and then geppetto will pull the other two cards where they can combo off relatively easy. God, I've seen them go as early as like turn six. Uh, it was yeah. just absolutely yeah. absurd between with the, all yeah. the ramp. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I mean, there's a lot of card draw here. Druid just does it a little better. Yeah. Although I don't Much think better. there's a ton of it. I don't think there's a ton of it on the ladder at the moment. But you know, this stuff all changes so quickly. So we'll see. It does. Especially with the mini set coming, but hey, I'm, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really hoping for some sort of you know resurgence if there ever was with this deck. Um, I think there is a lot of potential here, or in a etc type combo deck like this, um, just because it does do everything it's trying to do so well with risky skipper and battle rage and acolyte of pain and blood boil brute, right? So. I, I do see a spot for this in in the future. Maybe when Secret Mage, you know, if something happens to Secret Mage, definitely. But you know, I, I think hopefully, uh, yeah, I'm saying that with bias too because I do really enjoy playing this deck. So yeah, yeah. Um, well, hopefully, yeah. I feel like and, Secret Mage is gonna have to get hit hard to go somewhere. Yeah, right. they just got 
too many tools. I'm skeptical. Now. I'm skeptical that they're gonna touch it. To be honest, I don't know. I mean, if they do, right, when they nerf stuff, it's usually standard-based. So I could see them touching, like, rigged fair game and say draw two instead of draw three. But the core yeah. of the deck, I sincerely doubt they're going to change all that much. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys do you guys think anything since we're since we're sort of there? Do you think that they'll hit it? And, and if, they, if they were, what do you think they would change? I'm with you on rigged deck card. I just, like, whenever I... Am actually running that that deck. It's mm-hmm. it's so ob like you can get you can draw right off the bat like you know priest can't hit you in the face right off the bat so you're gonna draw those cards instantly like a druid you can just keep hitting you so that you don't get your your stupid draw but yeah that card's pretty broken and yeah it's it's it it sucks playing against it but it's one of those like haha look how many cards I got in my hand now game just started. <laughs> <laughs> right i think um it'll go down at two so i'll, I'll make mine short because i don't want to go too far um mm-hmm. i got lucky um most expansions i will somehow end up on this side of the spectrum playing the most weird weak stuff while everyone else is climbing i just how stumbled just somehow stumbled into cabal lackey turn one rig fair game mm-hmm. during the week where everybody was saying Aluneth versus Sage. And then it's just kind of like Rick Fair game was like, hey, hey, look at me. (laughs) Everybody's like Sage versus Aluneth. And then as the week went on, that was the week I was climbing. And I was like, yo, turn one, Cobal Lackey. Turn two, you draw four cards. How does nobody see this? Not that not that I pushed it, but then it just caught on. So I think it goes from three to two. I think the two will still help, but that card is nuts, man. Either way, you're you're playing the card for free, so yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, and, and they're ready. Think about the games where like, uh, you and the mage opponent, you both have like one or two cards in your hand. You're going back and forth, and then you're trying to make sure you you hit damage on their face when you know it's a rig fair game, and then there's that one turn you can't, and then boom, they draw four cards, and now they're back in the game. Like that that feeling right there. I don't know what's worse, that or like when they draw four in turn two. Yeah. yeah, I I think uh, I like to take a little different approach when uh, nerfing secret mage. I think the problem is, you know, being able to get zero mana secrets so efficiently now. So I would mm. personally target Cobal Lackey over rigged fair game. Um, and mm. I know that Blizzard also is, you know, we said how they don't like to change wild cards, but they also don't like to change standard cards for wild. You know, mm. so I think that there's a better chance of them nerfing something like a Cabal Lackey or another one, um, another card that I think is kind of broken now is Cabal Crystal Runner, which a lot of people might be like, hmm, of. But I think that being able to get your secrets out so cheap and then being able to get like a two or zero mana five five on top of that is just way too much power for a deck. And I I think that like, you know, the four fours are like overpowered but they're not breaking the game but i think cabal crystal runner should be like eight mana um (laughs) personally no i agree i here's here's i mean i'll give you my hot take on it and i kind of agree wild card in chat saying zero mana cards are bad and i tend to agree (laughs) that all you had to do in the entire game of hearthstone anything that says you know instead of zero you just say you know it has to cost at least one and so, yeah. okay, fine. You know, if you've got, uh, which which would probably ruin this deck for people, right? You play, you couldn't play Cabal Crystal Runner on one anymore, right? It'd be a okay. Your next secret costs one instead yeah. of zero, or Cabal Crystal Runner, right? Reduces your secret by two every turn, but can't cost less than zero or can't cost less than one. Um, That's an interesting fix too. Yeah, I like that. stuff like that, or yeah. even even your. Um, uh, your Kieran Tor Mage, you know, you couldn't play it until turn four now instead of turn three, right? So it would say you, yeah. you can play a secret for one. It, I mean, it would probably ruin the whole deck, but uh, maybe yeah. then, <laughs> <laughs> it'd make the Reno version better. That's true. <laughs> I don't know. But, I, you know, I don't know. That's That would be my solution. And then, hey, with all your giants, can't can't be reduced below one. 
Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Same thing. Sorcerer's Apprentice. Get, reduce everything, but no less than one. I think that would solve a lot of issues in my mind. I don't know is, how good it would be, oh, though. Th- this is like very off track, but would you consider that same philosophy with Librams? Uh, yes, yes, but it sort of defeats the purpose of like. Well, how much is the how much is the normal Libram? Is it one or is it two? It's two, it's right? Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd be okay with that. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a really a problem in Wild, anyways. But in Standard, that deck, like that pure Paladin or Libram Paladin, both are very strong. So, yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, you're still playing a pretty powerful card for one yeah. instead of zero. Like, and by late game, you're floating mana anyways. So I don't see the problem with it. It makes your early right. turns. It, I mean, it would make your early game turns a lot less powerful. It would slow the games down a little bit. Um. I don't necessarily see a problem with that. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting yeah, question. I mean, I don't know, right? Until you test played it, is that good or not? Does that ruin the deck? I don't know. Ruin the game. <laughs> <laughs> Marsha Boo's crying in chat right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn. Sorry, Boo. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. I, I'm... I'll pass the mic over to you. Whatever you guys think is. Oh, I was going to say, you know, we were talking about a uh, broomstick nerf earlier, but if they nerf broomstick, then this deck would probably be in the gutter. So let's, mm. let's hope that doesn't happen. Ooh. I can see yeah. them just making it cost more. That's all. So you definitely That's need true. some emperor ticks on that. Yeah. I don't see a problem with broomstick. I mean, it's annoying, right? When it comes down, it's annoying, but it's not like. I think I think rush as a mechanic is pretty healthy. It's very impactful, but it can't go face, so it's not like you can OTK with it. Um, I saw somebody post, I, maybe it was Slizzle, I can't remember, um, how Master Shaw next to Broomstick, and it's like, legendary hunter minion, and then it's just like, <laughs> minion everybody has access to, it costs one mana. Does the same thing. <laughs> That's neutral, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does the exact same thing. <laughs> Yo, that's funny. I want to see a YouTube video where it's like how Master Shaw is like unleash the hounds or whatever his voice line is, and then it like cuts to someone else. It's like a, it's just a his his a broomstick. Just 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 ride the broomstick. <laughs> like <laughs> you don't get the four mana and all the hounds. Just one mana ride a broomstick. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I'm too okay. Clap. I'm sorry, Hunter. You I'm sorry. okay? I misspoke. You can OTK with it. Clearly, we're talking about that deck right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you can OTK with it. You know, though, I never feel bad when there's like an, when an OT te- when an OTK deck takes skill to pull off. It doesn't feel bad to me. Like, hey, if, if I lose to this, I'm not even mad. It's like, okay, they earned that one. Yeah. Um, it's so it's it's different. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely need a lot of games under your belt to like feel like you have you know what you're doing with this deck. Yeah. Which, yeah. You know, like I still feel like I misplay every game. So <laughs> um it's hard, but it's it's a blast. Man, you're rank 1 legend if you misplay it. <laughs> if you misplay it uh we 10 star gamers over here dude <laughs> well i can't speak yeah, for man. mike but <laughs> oh, gosh, crap. Uh. Uh, i'm joking i'm just... hey <laughs> we'll play what my point is is we'll play it worse than you but it will have a lot of fun doing it oh yeah and you know once you pull off that combo it's gonna feel so good that's yeah, true cool. that's true you hmm. know what if i can pull it off once just one time we'll be happy yeah, yeah. But okay. watching watching people do it, it's incredible. Like it, that's one mm-hmm. of those things that you just don't see coming, and or maybe you do see it coming, but there's nothing you can do about it. Right. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it. Is there anything else that like w- we're missing about this deck, or that wouldn't you wouldn't notice by looking at the deck list, or that's not intuitive? I mean, I think that we'll get um, a better scope of it when we sit down and play some games with it but if i'm just looking at this deck list is there anything else that you want to contribute or anything else you think we should know um so i guess one or two things uh a really interesting kind of not combo but just the way the numbers work out 
uh, Risky Skipper has three health and ETC has four. So what you can do sometimes is like play, you know, Risky Skipper to damage your ETC and clear enough board space to get like, you know, six ETCs out with Bran and a Bloodsworn. And it, this is like if you have to use your Gaudier and Og, Og Merchant for something else. Um, and you can combo that way. I've done that a couple times too. And then another thing would be the power of uh, just like, as I said, using an Og Merchant. Another really good use for that is for your Blood Boil Brutes. So you can play your Blood, blood Boil Brute, Og Merchant it, and then maybe even Blood Sworn it. Because using one Blood Sworn is fine when you can still get three ETCs with the second one and Bran. Yeah. Right? So yeah. getting two five seven Divine Shield Rush Minions is incredible. So that I've won many games doing that as well. Okay. Cool. I mean, I like the idea of an alternate win con that you don't need to necessarily, you know, use ETC. I mean, I've played against this deck a couple of times, and, and I always kind of felt like, Hey, when they're dropping their Og Merchant early, or they're dropping their um, uh, what do you call uh, Bloodsworn Mercenaries early, it's like, oh, cool. Now, now they can't use those to combo against me. Yeah, but yeah. Th there's some kind of alternate win con here. Mm -hmm. And actually, a place that that was highlighted was in the uh, the Hearthstone World Championships. Actually, it's not the same because obviously Wild Standard, but. Uh, I forgot who it was. It was in the finals, and he was playing ETC Warrior, and he was using, like, a Blood Sworn to maybe win back some tempo, and he was going for, like, kind of a weird line. And that's kind of the cool part about ETC decks is that there's so many fun lines that you can do, right? So even the casters were like, doesn't he need to save that for the combo? You know, but yeah. he's using the Blood Sworn to get that damage in now that he would have gotten with the ETC later. And with that, he's interacting with the board more and getting more pressure on the opponent through that. So it, it's, again, it's a really fun, versatile deck. Um, but it also is just brutal to play sometimes. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, before we move on, do you guys have any questions about this deck? I'm just looking forward to actually see this thing in action and uh, get a better feel for it that way. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm ready to see an action too. I'm, I'm excited for it. Rock and roll. All right. Um. Oh wait. We, oh, like Memnarch said, we need uh, Eater of Secrets. So take out ETC. <laughs> yeah, we'll just pull ETC. We'll just pull ETC out and put an Eater of Secrets in. <laughs> yeah. Perfect plan. What could go wrong? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? Jeez. <laughs> well this is fun uh so for the people listening we'll post uh we'll post this deck on our website we'll we'll post the list in the show notes also on the website uh and in discord as well and so yeah it should be fun this this will be a blast and we'll we'll play some games with this and see if we can pull off the combo a couple of times that'd be a, that'd be fun we could make a double etc put in the original yeah. one hey there we go there we go. Hey, there's a couple of flex spaces, right? <laughs> the animation, <laughs> the the animation for ETC is actually really cool. It's yeah. it's worth it just on its own. Just just that. Just to see it. And have everybody go like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they get confused. I think you put the wrong ETC in your deck. <laughs> I was very confused the very first time I saw somebody play ETC. I didn't know what was going on, but I was very impressed. Mm-hmm. The an the animation for some of these is so great. Um <laughs> uh, all right. Well before we wrap things up here, touching on the at the end of last week's show, we had a listener challenge uh to get lethal with and with a novice engineer. And uh our buddy in discord repost did it and he did it surprisingly quickly it was like the next day it was so oh. fast and so it made me think like hey and so we gifted him a couple packs so congrats uh to repost, congrats, repost. so shared oh, here awesome. uh he shared with us the screenshot and he's and he shared the hs replay so i feel like that's that's fair game and he was the first one to do it so uh we sent him off a couple of packs and um 
so congrats there. I think that's something we're just going to do each week and try to come up with fun, uh, fun things similar to achievement hunting, but we'll reward you with a couple of packs. So, but yeah. this was too easy. Clearly this was too easy. If he can do it by the next day, we need to kick it up and uh, kick it up a notch. So yeah. the one that I've been thinking, thinking about, and I'm open to suggestions, you guys, um, I I had been thinking about trying to have them get lethal with a doomsayer. What do you guys think yes. about that? That's harder, yes. right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's that that's what I like. Like, there's there's some clear lines you can take with it, but I I, I think that one would be good. Doomsayer I don't lethal. I don't want to spoil it. I mean, I can think of some ways. It, it sort of relies on your opponent not killing hmm. it. I mean, you can you can like the the most fun way to do it is your opponent plays one and you steal it and you use theirs to kill them with it. Like that's the most fun, <laughs> right? That's incredible. But there's some ways uh, to do it. I'm sure. Uh, like, yeah, I don't want to share too many ideas of how to do it, but uh, I, I'm, people will figure it out. So here, I have an idea, but it might be cheating. <laughs> so here, <laughs> don't, don't say. Okay, okay. Yeah, don't. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it after the show. Okay, so here. <laughs> So here's the here's the and then we'll have to we'll have to chat about this next week and see if you guys c come up with some other things. Um, yeah. So here's the challenge, listener challenge for this the next week. Mm -hmm. Get lethal with the doomsayer. It does not have to be ranked, but it can't be against the innkeeper and it can't be against a friend. So you can do it in casual. You can do it in ranked. Either way, I don't care. It really should be wild because it's a wild show after all. Um, <laughs> but it, it's fine if you do it in casual. You don't want to tank your rank doing this. So you, but you got to send us uh, proof that you did it. So mm -hmm. send us screenshots. Right send us Discord. the HS replay. Get it to us, preferably in Discord, but Twitter's fine yeah. or email's fine, I suppose. Um, and uh, gift you a couple packs. More importantly, you get the bragging rights that you did this. So. <laughs> Right hey, I love it. I say, I say posting it in Discord. I, I say is the first option. Um, it'll let everybody in the community know you got it in. It'll show like you're the first one, and then we can all chat right there in the moment. I'm I'm down with that. This is cool. Lethal with the Doomsayer. Nate, you're a genius. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't remember. I don't know. I can't take full credit for this one. Somebody mentioned it. and I don't know who it was. That was me. I, t I told oh, you about it. There you go. But that's uh, fine. Doesn't matter. But yeah, we'll see. We keep coming up with this type of thing. This is kind of fun. I think this is a good way to get the community involved. And mm -hmm. uh, it does not have to be a gold doomsayer. I just like shiny things. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, but yeah, I, I like the idea of having it in, in the Discord channel as well because mm -hmm. like the, the, the bragging rights and the packs only go to the first person that does it. So yeah. Rock and roll, and you know, you know what else we can do? Um, since Nate created this challenge, uh, you know, our faithful leader, um, I'm gonna write his coattails, and what I'll do is I'll award the winners uh, a Discord role for that challenge. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, I like it. I like it. So, so something else that can go with the prize as well. I, I'm gonna I will, after the show tonight. I'll work on that. That's spicy. I like that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Add value to the community, you know. Heck yeah! I will say the Discord community that we've got going is has been an absolute blast. It's been a, a rough couple of weeks for everybody, and it's very nice to go there and have friends to chat with, play some games with, kind of commiserate and 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 everything. And so I we really appreciate you all, and it's been a lot of fun. So um, and interacting with with all the folks in chat as well is really uh, quite a quite a bit of fun. So thanks everybody. Uh, yeah, thanks. Well, and Hazer, thank you so thank much you. for joining us on the show this week. Uh, have a fun time hanging out with you and chatting. It's been a long time in the works. We'll have to have you back. And yep. uh, appreciate you taking your time ch chatting with us. For people out there who's, who are looking to follow your content, steal your decks, <laughs> watch you play it at, at uh, Top Legend, where can they find you? Yeah, so I'm on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is just Hazer underscore HS. And then I also stream on Twitch daily. Um, it's uh, Hazer Streams HS, all lowercase, no spaces. So that'd be greatly appreciated. And, you know, thank you guys for having me on. This has been great. It's been a lot of fun uh, talking about ETC and, you know, just discussing what's up with Wild. So thank you. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Mike, where can people find you? Yeah, you guys can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Mike Low TV. I'll be playing some Hearthstone. Uh, I see that they're talking about some new cards coming out, so uh, I'll be looking to kick the uh, streams back up. Rock and roll. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I love watching your streams. I got my Twitch email today, and, and uh, I think yours was my the number one stream that I yeah. watched. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> love to see it. Hydra, where can people find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Hydralisk underscore HS, and you can always find me here every Friday night at 6 p.m., uh pst and also in the discord we are all pretty active in the discord we have it hopping in there us hosts and the big community that we have we got something for everybody in there so come check it out and uh i'll talk to you there awesome as for me uh the best place to find me is on twitter at nate wolf tcg it's n-a-t-e-w-o-l-f-e-t-c-g and also on on discord uh, very active in, in our Discord. It's been a lot of fun hanging out with people. Uh, more importantly, you can find the show and everything show related at born to be wild hs.com. Again, it's born to be wild hs.com. Uh, if you visit our website, we've got all kinds of stuff there. Uh, we've got all of our shows. The video versions are up there. We've got deck spotlights up there. We've got links to our Discord and to a, a whole bunch of stuff. Something that uh, we did over the past week started adding uh, wild deck lists to the website. And so if you guys are looking for decks to play, we post them all in Discord as well. But if you go to the website, uh, separate pages for each class, and uh, you can copy and paste the deck codes straight from our website. So again, that's born to be wild, Uh Typically with the show, after, after each show, we'll play some games with the deck that we talked about. And so uh, for those people who are listening to the audio version of this podcast, if you swing on over to our YouTube, which is youtube.com slash born to be wild podcast, you can check out our decks of the week, uh, some deck spotlights and see some gameplay there. We've got all the deck codes listed as well in the description. Uh, I hope that everyone is able to join us next week. We will have our special guest next week is going to be Bat Masil. So that'll be a blast hanging out with him. Looking forward to that as well. It's got some good things coming up for you. So uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great night. We will see you next week on Born to be Wild. <laughs>